But we are here to talk transfers because things are moving. And we have got the main man, the man himself. I'm delighted to say friend of the show, Paul O'Keefe joins us again. Paul, how are you getting on, buddy? You okay? You well? I'm very well, thank you. Good to meet you. Yeah, Lovely. Kelly? Yeah, really good, mate. Really good. Really good to have you back. It's been absolutely fantastic. Well, look, everybody's questioning. Mm -hmm. Everybody's asking, what Me is too. going on with the transfers? What's going on with the transfers, Paul? So we're going to come straight into it if we can. We've got a, quite a long uh, show to get through to, for, for everybody. And we'll get all your questions as well. But I suppose the first question, really, Paul, that I wanted to ask, if possible, going straight off piece, by the way, Matt, is the big three, Paul. The big three. Mm -hmm. What's going on with that big three situation? <laughs> Uh, again, told not just ten minutes before the show, they still think that they've got uh, free um, free deals they can do, free players that they believe that they can get in. Um, they're keeping obviously everything as tight lipped as possible. Um, there's no there's no question that things have changed since the new regime came in with what gets out and what doesn't get out. And I keep being told the same thing that they believe that they've got free players that will come to Spurs in this transfer window. Mate, and that is good news, isn't it, Matty, to be fair? I mean, there's, 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 it's been a little bit of unrest, even between us and the WhatsApp groups and whatever, thinking, you know, why are Spurs moving? What's going on? But but there is things starting to creep now, yeah. starting to move. I mean, we, we can't forget that we have had a busy summer already, not only just with the tour, but with the transfers, like ins and the outs and that type of thing. But things are starting to kind of ramp up a little bit now, aren't they? Yeah, most definitely. I mean, it was a big priority for, for, for Daniel to get people out. That was his major, major thing this summer. He wants as many players out as possible. So that, that he wanted to clear the decks, get the wage bill down, which they've done really significantly, massively. Obviously, with, since they've lost Eric and they've lost Harry and Hugo and uh, alike. So they've, they've really reduced the wage bill to sort of have a bit of a clean slate. But as, as always with Tottenham, they, they drag their feet, don't they, with these deals and they go on and they go on and they go on and they're arguing. They're arguing over a million quid here with, with um, Emerson Royale. And that, I don't think they'll ever change those habits, unfortunately. <laughs> Matt, there's, there's, yeah, there's, there's plenty to get into tonight. And I think Dominic Solanke is the, the, the big name that everyone wants mm -hmm. to hear about at the moment. But we're going to we're going to leave that one for, for a minute. And I want to ask you, Paul, about the, the business that Tottenham have already done this summer. You know, we're, we're two weeks away from the season and there's been a number of incomings. Archie Gray, um, as we were speaking about beforehand, coming in from Leeds on what was yeah. a pretty, pretty big fee for an 18 year old, mm -hmm. most expensive 18 yeah. year old yeah. in Premier League history. We also had Lucas Bergval, although it was a deal agreed in February. He came in and joined the club on the 1st of July. And of course, we retained Timo Werner on his loan deal from Orby Leipzig under similar conditions to that first deal. Um, outgoings will, of course, be crucial for Tottenham as we do try and get some some more numbers in. But with Pierre-Emile Hoybier and, and Brian Hill being the most recent departures, I just want to know what you make of the, the business that Tottenham have managed to do so far this summer. With regards to the outs, I don't think we can have too many complaints. Um, there's only a couple of players, really, that now that you, you'd say definitely need to be sort of moved on. The Celso and Regulon will be the two that they'll try desperately to get rid of. Um, Regulon, absolutely no future at Tottenham match whatsoever. Um, Giovanni, they say that um, he doesn't have the legs for Angie's system, so they're prepared to let him out. Um, I think that was quite obvious. That he was a bit of a big part, wasn't he? Came on, done a few nice cameos and... Yeah, there's obviously a player there. He's obviously a talented footballer, but he doesn't suit what they want. Can you tell us, is, is there a direction that Tottenham are going right now? Maybe in terms of positions or maybe in terms of, of profiles that we really want to, to bring in this window? Yeah, I mean, they, 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 want, they obviously want a winger. So they, they, want, they, want, they want a winger um, and, and they, want, they want a forward. But the, the criteria for the forward is that the, the pressing is, is important. So as we spoke about privately before, um, they don't want a, a poacher, like it's what you would say, like is a traditional nine. So that, that you need to offer more than that. So probably, you know, so when they're weighing up Ivan Tony and, the, and, and other players, they're looking at uh, Dominic because they've been particularly impressed by his pressing ability and other aspects of his play. So I think that, you know, that, that's one that um, they're starting to really pursue now. Because I think they've made a decision on that one. 
And do, do we have and, any? Sorry. Uh, sorry, mate. Sorry, I'm just going to interact and go off piece again. So I'm excited, <laughs> but I just, I, just on that, I mean, can you give us an insight, a little insight, Paul, into kind of the way that football works on an inside perspective? Because you know, and I do this all the time as well. Right? We're, we're out there, you know, it's two weeks before the season starting. <coughs> we're thinking, who's going to be our starting eleven? It's going to be the same starting eleven as what we had that finished the game against, uh, you know, City or you know, uh, you know, Newcastle or whatever towards the end of the season. There's no been no, no no one really coming in. You mentioned earlier about you know they've been talking for weeks or for months. For oh, yeah, yeah. How does it kind of work, Paul, in terms of like because there's, there's some people, including some of us in in the group as well, that are going. Well, he didn't play at the Euros, uh, Dominic Solanke. He, he wasn't out on international duty. Why didn't we just go and get him? Like, why, why hasn't he had the pre-season? And for some of us, we just can't compute why that hasn't happened. Yeah. Give us a little bit of an insight into what may be going on there. Yeah, so generally what, what will happen is you, you'll have intermediaries approached um, or the agent approached to, to sort of first understand where the player's head's at. Because obviously... You don't want to go and bid for a player if he has no interest in coming to your club. So, like I said, with the Connor stuff, it was probably I'm in mean, an arm and backwards and forwards. Are, you know, are you, you know, how, are you going to commit? Are you going to sort of push to come to Spurs? And then they've got to try and, and, and meet the manager or speak to the manager at least to see how, how he would fit into their plans. These players go away, they go on holiday, they think about it and all the rest of it. And that all, all takes, it's a process because you, you obviously you're not going to, you're not going to approach a club for a player just randomly and it just bolt from the blue like oh I suppose have just bid x x amount of pounds for for someone that they don't know whether he has any interest in joining the club so it's just it's just doing it's doing the groundwork really so they they'll identify they'll spend months and months and months identifying these targets they, they might approach them they might speak to them and then when they meet them or when they speak to their representatives the, the deal is, is is ridiculous there's different um criteria there's different people involved that you didn't realize were going to be involved there's different clauses in a contract that you might not have uh, understood at the beginning so it's a little bit more complicated just just saying well go and pay the money go and pay his release fee and he'll be your player it doesn't in in real life it doesn't work like that unfortunately it's not that easy yeah. sadly yeah I, I just wanted to bring bring in the the release clause that you mentioned there paul as as another potential factor of what could be delaying this deal because i think 65 million pounds for a player who's only had one season where he scored more than 10 in in a premier league team it, it seems to me personally anyway unlikely that tottenham would go and pay that 65 million pounds so potentially as has been yeah. suggested in the media yeah. there are other players that could be involved in this deal yeah. which is more complications and more delays mm -hmm. do we know at this point any do we have any idea on what that structure could be for this move so that's why you get the player on side first isn't it so you, you do your background stuff and you get you get him chomping at the bit to come and join you and then that gives you a stronger hand in negotiations i mean that's just that's just the way that well works so even if he has a release clause which he does um there's a little bit of dispute on how much that actually is um it, i don't know whether it's 65 million euros or if it's in pounds but um from what i understand from the evening is that the mark uh will be around uh, 55 with add-ons um but that would get the deal done now whether spurs go to that level only daniel levy can answer that question um my my opinion on the player would i invest 55 plus maybe 10 in add-ons 65 plus then give him a 30 40 million pound contract on dominic Solanke? never in a million years i have to be honest um Wow, that's a that's a hundred million pound investment in a twenty seven year old. I think it's his birthday in September, actually. Um, who has had one very good season last season, and but I looked at his ratio today. He's, he's one in one in four and a half games. Um, so I hope that they do know a lot more than me. Obviously, these people that are, that are coaching and managing. So I hope that I'm terribly wrong, and he he smashes. If he comes, he absolutely smashes it. But. I personally, I would be looking for a better value elsewhere, but then it's not my money. So really, we shouldn't care that much. We? And we do want to ask you, Paul, about Eberechi Eze. Yeah. And er earlier in the summer, I think it was clear straight away that, that he was a big target for Tottenham. And there yeah. was the fear that Manchester City might come in and, and make a move there. We got that report from the, I think it was Jack Gaughan of the Daily Mail a, a couple of weeks ago. Um, but Tottenham ha don't seem to have been put off by the release clause that the 25-year-old has, which is believed to be around £60 million. Mm -hmm. And Crystal Palace have made it clear that any club who do want to make a deal would have to pay a considerable amount of that fee up front. And now Crystal Palace may also be in a position 
position where they can refuse to negotiate anything other than the release clause being triggered, having already sold Michael Elise to Bayern Munich and with Mark Gahey now on the verge of joining Newcastle United <coughs> as well. How realistic do you think it is that we could see Everetti as a, a Tottenham player before this window closes? I think, um, from what I can gather, it, it, it's going to be him or Neto. Um, and that would that would be the ideal um well not ideal but that that's that's the way that the sort of the hints and the sort of communications i'm having is that if one is 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 particularly too difficult to do then i think focus will go fully on the other one um and where they're at with that i honestly don't know that like i say they they believe they got they've got three players that um they can get in the building but i don't believe it will be both of them I mean, if you look at it purely from, and this this might actually be a clue as to why they've all of a sudden gone gone hard for Solanke, because maybe they've decided that one of those two is too difficult to do. Um, Interesting. So, so I, you know, I, I see a, a, a sort of centre forward now, um, a wide player, and then I think there'll be a, a lesser named player to come through the door. Do we have any information on the the technicalities of that release clause for for Eze? Because I think with with, with Michael Olise, it was mm. it seemed to be a very complicated release clause, and it was we were yeah. kind of waiting for the the official announcement for from Bayern Munich for for two weeks mm. before it eventually came because there were so mm. many. And you mentioned it earlier how little clauses can can pop up in contracts, and that seemed to be a massive yeah. delay for Olise. Do we know anything about Eze's that it could be something similar? Well, I, I, all I know is that a stipulation of it is that they they've got a They've got a sell on as well, haven't they? They've got to they've got to dish out some some money, and they want a large. They want near enough the whole fee up front, which I don't. In football now, that doesn't really happen. To be fair, um, so that's really difficult part aspect of the deal, um, and I think it, it just might end up being a bit too rich for them. To be honest, um, 60, 60, 68 million, I think would be with with add-ons and things like that so I, i'm not sure again they might surprise us and be able to pull off but are, are palace going to sell all three because apparently they're talking to newcastle about mark gay who was who was actually very very well liked by tottenham not you know last year and now of he's course he's having, he's having outstanding euros and all of a sudden his his, his price is is 60 million too so <laughs> you know it's a lot of money. Will, will Spurs spend sixty million on, say, as a sixty million on Neto, and then sixty million on Solanke? I mean, that seems like fantasy football land. <laughs> well, this is the land that we live in. <laughs> it's never if, if, if Daniel Levy does that, then I'll, I'll build him a statue. <laughs> it'll, only, it'll only be three for eight, but it'll be a statue. <laughs>